thank you. Today on X Play, rodents, <laughs> ruminants, and raccoons. Best party ever! No. Ah. Wait quietly for your rabies shot. It's game time. Sessler, for Morgan Webb. Prepare to be reviewed. Prepare to be reviewed. This is X Play. Their hearts are made of plexiglass. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Hello and welcome to X Play. We are to video games what Linda Ellerby is to the news. Remember when she did coffee commercials? No, I just remember when she tried to explain the Defense of Marriage Act to America's preteens. And speaking of moralization, on today's show we review Black and White 2 Battle of the Gods, an expansion pack that lets you struggle with God as much as you did when you realized how cool it was that the bathroom door locks. Thank you, Philip Roth. And we review Over the Hedge, Based on the novel by Margaret Atwood about one woman's struggle to find her own identity in a world... No, no, wait, I'm thinking of The Blind Assassin. I think this game is about cartoon animals. It is. Mm -hmm. And later in the show, we've got a follow-up to one of the finest real-time strategy games. It has dragons made of glass. Is a rerun of Cribs gonna have dragons made of glass? No! That's why you should keep watching X-Play. Since SimCity first let you drop commercial developments anywhere you damn well please, PC games have been catering to our inner megalomaniac. And no developer took the genre of God games more literally than Peter Molyneux. Here's a review of Black and White 2, Battle of the Gods. Who doesn't heart a god? Omnipotent, unpredictable, and from its perspective, always right. Eccentric? Sure! But you see, they have to be, well, different than us. I mean, they can pick us up and pop our heads off like a crawdad anytime they want, right? But they know fear is only one way to ensure obedience. The other way? Take him out, tree him sweet, and let the sheep feel as good as they can before the slaughter. Black and White 2 Battle of the Gods retains all the original titles Deus Sim Machina, and then goes ahead and marginally updates the visual glam slammery one would expect of feuding deities. The operative phrase in the title is, of course, Battle of the Gods. That means instead of applying the usual feel-good frosting of harvest happy, blight pissed, human to god ratio of the original black and white, you'll now get to sally forth to the field of battle to defend all you've created. In order to defeat evil, however, you're going to need a solid plan. The armory's gotta be the most important building for our war machine. And we know what that means. You'll build, cajole, guide, fortify, and spring potential soldiers from the enemy's prison, all the while being buffeted by your adversary's salty invective, which is rude. My undead warriors are almost ready. Back from the original black and white are the tiny twin furies representing good and evil. But they're still begging your attention to their particular form of problem solving. Death and destruction's what's happened here. Looks good to me. Let's stay for a holiday. You can select good or evil from the beginning, which will affect certain buildings and the tribute you'll start with. But in the end, it really doesn't affect gameplay all that much. <laughs> also back and ready for battle are your mid-sized demigods. It's still up to you to maintain their well-being, but they seem a little more focused to directives, like whoop the Jesus out of those guys and swat these undead. A new addition to the House of Lords takes the form of a depressive turtle who slods around with a mopey stride and does what turtles do best, breaking down doors made of solid evil. You'll be facing off against the Aztecs you defeated last time around, who have managed to raise a necromantic ne'er-do-well who has an eye on the downfall of your happy homestead. This world reeks of life. The island itself seems larger and complete with much more explorable detail. 
We felt the absence of multiplayer and skirmish mode and chintzy oversight. Constant campaigning meant tirelessly satisfying objectives of varying necessity. It would have just been nice to ramble around with my fuzzy buddy, right, pal? There's a few mini games afoot here for minor diversion, but they really don't assuage fatigue much. When Black and White first came out, it really seemed novelly entertaining because of the quirky completeness of its whimsical world. Now that we're used to it, however, we would like a little more to chew on. A three. <laughs> out no, of five. We must save him. Well, my problem with Black and White 2 was that it was almost too open-ended. Now, this expansion gives it a nice focus. Plus, you can teach your avatar animal to poop on people's houses. I respect that in the game. The Animal Kingdom is full of wonders like electric eels, echidnas, Mary Kay to Olsen, but one little Scandinavian rodent has gained an unearned reputation for illogical behavior and is the basis for our next game. Here's Lemmings! Lemmings. They live in the Arctic. They belong to the Arvicolinae subfamily of rodents. And now, they're invading your PSP. Spawned from the PC game many moons ago, the premise of Lemmings hasn't really changed since the early days. A portal in the sky spits out the tiny green-haired creatures, and it's your job to get them safely to the far side of the map. Hey, how did all you guys get tickets to the Great White concert? Hey, what's with the pyrotechnics, man? Talk about once bitten, twice shy. The problem is, lemmings are about as smart as your average American Idol voter. Taylor Hicks my ass. If they're walking towards a cliff, you'd better stop them or you'll have to listen to their adorable death gurgles. This game is founded on the idea that lemmings are stupid. A horrible myth propagated by Walt Disney. Hello, boys and girls. Disney made a movie in 58 called White Wilderness, classic. You see, lemmings are boring in real life, so he spiced things up by having the lemmings jump off cliffs in ritualistic suicide. <laughs> to get the shots, we had to shove hundreds of the little buggers into the water by hand. They looked so funny gasping for life until they drowned. It still makes me smile. <laughs> You navigate the obstacles your lemmings face by assigning jobs to individual rodents. They can turn into living barriers. They build staircases that lead to nowhere. They dig, or you can assign them to be suicide bombers. Allah is great! <laughs> Graphically, lemmings looks better than ever, although on the PSP screen, each lemming is tiny. Grabbing a specific lemming can be frustrating since the PSP doesn't have a mouse. There are roughly 150 lemming levels, and you can download even more online. Lemmings is a new version of an old concept. If you've already slurped the Sony Kool-Aid and bought a PSP, this game will be a fun addition to your library. The lemmings on the PSP commit four suicides out of five. They're really funny when they drown. <laughs> Now, I think I'd be happier if I knew there was another species capable of suicide on the planet. I've long maintained the mass extinction of species was not because of climate change, but is actually the result of rampant depression in the plant and animal kingdoms. What's the foundation for this theory? Have a fair amount of ExxonMobil stock. Oh. After the break, Emergency 3, and later on, Rise of Legends. It's holiday time in the city, and you'll find incredible savings on the year's coolest gifts. With Circuit City's 125% low price guarantee on TVs, you'll save on an HD TV the whole family can enjoy. And right now, you'll also get no payments and no interest for 18 months on all TVs $9.99 and up. Plus, all TVs $4.99 and up are on sale. And remember, Circuit City gift cards make a perfect stocking stuffer. Circuit City. Attention, all passengers, unaccompanied minors is a fun-filled adventure for the whole family. The perfect holiday laugh fest. Ho, ho, ho. Hysterical and heartwarming. Could this night get any better? Unaccompanied minors, rated PG, now playing. I got nothing. Don't worry about it. Cindy, I'm home. Dad! Warning, the makers of Tag Wildcard remind you that if you mess with the Kings Queens, you better watch your ace, Jack. Tag Wildcard. Um. Consider yourself warned.
Rated T for Teen. January 15th. Engage. Star Trek The Next Generation goes interactive. <laughs> Upgraded with 22 new stocks and all new facts and stats. Resistance is futile. Star Trek TNG 2.0 premieres January 15th. You will be assimilated only on G4. They'll rip you to shreds. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Do you smell that? Do you? That's X play fresh from the oven and toasty warm. But household appliances are no laughing matter. According to the Center for Disease Control, most household accidents occur in the kitchen. Well, those bureaucrats over at the CDC sit on their duffs and let innocent people die of fire poisoning. The men and women of America's emergency rescue teams are out saving them. A new RTS game highlights their brave work. Here's Emergency 3. Holy crap! Great, great. Who's gonna clean up this mess? And that mess? Oh, come on! This is just getting ridiculous. In Emergency 3, it is your responsibility to deal with the disasters caused by a world full of terrible drivers, terrorists, and faulty engineering. I smell lawsuit. The game plays like a typical real-time strategy game, but instead of killing people, you're helping people. Except for these hippies. I say we gas them, beat them, and lock their Al Gore-loving asses up. This new twist on the RTS style, at first glance, seems like a great idea. But moments after taking control of the interface, you realize that micromanaging every single character is a necessity. Want these guys to start hosing down the fire? Well, you'll have to highlight them, right-click them, choose the hose icon, then highlight them individually, send them to a hydrant, and finally, they can start hosing down the building. Well, at least they're not stealing jeans. Of course, while this is going on, you're also expected to hunt down illegal street racers and save the lives of the innocent bystanders. Ah! 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 This wouldn't be so bad if the game offered a wide enough view of the city, but you're stuck with about a half-block view oh, at way. max. You'll end up scrolling back and forth across the city in pursuit of the bad guys. Of course, once you do find them, they'll just drive off the map. The tutorial isn't much of a help. It only shows you the very basic steps to accomplish the very simple mission. Very good. The fire engine is no longer required. In truth, the key to having a successful emergency task force is to have the ability to see the future. <coughs> Simply play through a challenge once and you'll know what to expect when you replay it. Oops, criminal got away. But next time, I'll have my SWAT team waiting for him. Maybe we should get FEMA some precogs, or at least Mrs. Cleo. It's really too bad that they can't seem to get it right, because Emergency 3 has the makings of a good game. It's an interesting twist on the RTS, but you'd think they have something better to offer by the third game. Emergency 3 gets a 2. Out of 5. I never realized saving people from burning buildings was that boring. It always seemed more dashing when MacGyver did it. Mm -mm, mm. I'm not gonna take a setup for a MacGyver joke. Mm. What? The fart joke champion of extended cable is suddenly too fancy for a simple MacGyver joke? It's just lame and everybody knows what the punchline is gonna be, so why should I say it? Because co-hosting is about trust. <sighs> Okay, Morgan, okay, so it seemed more exciting because he saved them with a fire extinguisher he made out of a ballpoint pen, baking soda, and a copy of Anna White's autobiography. Thank you. Yeah. In a moment. Okay, guys, this couldn't be any simple. Go over the hedge. And later on, Rise of Legends. I'm Layla Cayley, and this is The Feed. Nominations were announced for the Golden Globe Awards, with some nominees getting double nods. Clint Eastwood is nominated twice for Best Director, while Leonardo DiCaprio has two chances at Best Actor. The DVD of Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest is the most sold DVD of 2006. Best Buy is rumored to be hoarding their stockpiles of Nintendo Wiis to sell them after December 17th. 
Groups on both ends of the political spectrum are petitioning Walmart to stop selling the religious apocalypse game Left Behind Eternal Forces. And finally, Detroit Tigers pitcher Joel Zemaya missed three games this season due to forearm and wrist injuries. The culprit? Too much guitar hero. <laughs> well, that's all for now. Visit us on the web at g4tv.com slash the feed. It's all the news you need to know. I'm Layla Kaylee, and you have just been fed. Today's your big day, huh? That is right, my man. <laughs> I'm stepping into the starting five, and I'm gonna bring it. Too bad I won't see that. After all, it's my training with our kid that helped you get there. Whoa, I didn't see you putting up 20 and 12 against Milburn. And weren't you snoozing till noon the next day while we went for a few miles on Nike Air? Hold up, so we're sort of teammates? You like working together in the style? You got it. Yo, that's kind of touching, man. Are, are you crying? Nah, nah. Seriously. <laughs> Just allergic to my pillow. New Nike Air. Get us a foot locker. So, Peter, what's happening? Now, are you going to go ahead and have those TPS reports for us this afternoon? No. In fact, look, I'm gonna have to ask you to go ahead and just come back another time. Huh? I got a meeting with the Bobs in a couple of minutes. Somewhere else you'd rather be? Join over 7 million players in an online world of legendary adventure. World of Warcraft. Try it for free at warcraft.com. Rated T for T. Ah, uh, yeah. Your three medium Pizza Hut pizzas. That's only five bucks each, right? Yes, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Honey! The Pizza Hut kid made a mistake again! I got three medium Pizza Hut pizzas for the same price as those other guys! <laughs> yeah. It's no mistake. Pay just five bucks each for three medium one-topping hand-tossed Pizza Hut pizzas. Want to get three for five? Go for the good stuff. Give a holiday card everyone in the family will love. Pick up the Pizza Hut card today. Do you have the code? The ultimate code of seduction. The Armani Code. The Dragons for Men by Giorgio Armani. At Dillard's. Join the Rentway family. Your satisfaction is my personal guarantee. Okay, movies. Since Netflix has made it so easy for people to find the right movies, you're all going out today. Oh, Netflix right. users can choose from classics and new releases to TV shows and get the details on over 70,000 titles. Even search for children's movies based on age. That's you, Pinocchio. Yep. No late fees ever. So some of you may be out for quite a while. Children's movies. Don't forget to call home when you get there. Netflix. The DVDs you want from only $5.99 a month. Ten years ago, it started with a click. Progressive made car insurance easier by putting it online. They were the first. And 29 million quotes later, they're still doing it better than anyone else. So see how Progressive Direct changed car insurance forever. And it all started with a click. They're 80% scar tissue. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to XP. Children are only good for two things. Increasing your population in strategy games and working in 18th century textile factories. Their tiny hands are perfect for operating large, dangerous machines. <gasps> But now that draconian child labor laws have turned this corner of humanity into useless layabouts, they have a lot of time for platformers. So here's our review of Over the Hedge. It's summer, and that means movies for kids with voice acting by actors who were big in the 90s. And like the greedy greediness that is the movie video game conglomerate that has taken over the world, it only leads to the video game tie-in. Wow, it's like the best party ever, only the theme is mayhem. And this review. This time, it's Over the Hedge. Yes, Over the Hedge, the most biggest current feel-good comedy laugh-out-loud hit for children in hours. This year's Over the Hedge is last year's Madagascar, is last year's Ice Age, is last year's Constantine, is last year's, and so on, and so on, 
and so on and so on. The plot of Over the Hedge is simple. A bunch of survivors of a top-sized cruise line have made their way to the surface to survive. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the plot of the last Star Wars movie. No! I don't know, I only review video games. And watch Star Trek 2.0. That show is the bomb. Catch it every night at 11 p.m. here on G4. Anywho, seven-year-olds and man-children like Sessler will tell you that the characters here are a bunch of rabid, evil, smelly lower species that join forces to run riot through this passively wonderful suburban mythology. These creatures sneak into these humans' homes and destroy them like a Philip Seymour Hoffman hotel room. The only things in their way are the exterminator and other woodland creatures like the gopher. Do you know what a gopher can do to a golf course? This, of course, leads to woodland creature fighting woodland creature. Anywho, the movie may have the voice of Steve Carell or Bruce Willis or Gary Shanling, but the game does not. We'll discuss this at the log, young lady. I guess lending voices to video games is beneath these hoity-toity Hollywood liberal elite. No. Or maybe they knew just how average Over the Hedge truly is. Chips! Hooray! It's platforming. We've seen it many times in many different shapes, but it's still platforming. Over the Hedge could not be any simpler. Okay, guys, this couldn't be any simpler. Over the Hedge is a summer diversion. Nothing more, nothing less. It's like listening to a Kelly Clarkson song. You like it at first, but quickly forget it once it's over. Then you move on. That's Over the Hedge, my friends. That's our cue to get this show on the road. We give Over the Hedge three CGI movies blend into each other after a while. No! Out of five. If they couldn't get the big name stars to do the game, you think at least the B-listers would be willing to do it. Yeah. Alice and Janney, West Wing is over, and the call for trumpet voice transsexuals in primetime drama is drawing to a close. Would it kill you to do a freaking video game? You know, she was really good in 10 Things I Hate About You. Yeah, I like her too. All right, Alice and Janney, if you're watching, I'm sorry I called you a tranny. Up next. Magical Fairyland RTS. X Play is brought to you by The Block, coming January 15th, only on G4. Catch the entire first season of Arrested Development back to back. <laughs> the Arrested Development Marathon, Christmas Day at 9 a.m., only on G4. This season, what would you rather have? Roasted chestnuts? Or a double portion of slow roasted beef brisket topped with real cheddar and a sweet smoky sauce? Quiznos Smokehouse Beef Brisket Sub. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Toasty. Hold on, let me wipe the lens. This is Project 8. Here we go. Life is a blast when you know what you're doing. Best to know what you're doing for your life get ruined. Life is a thrill when your skill is developed. If you ain't got a skill, This is skateboarding. Tony Hawk's Project 8, rated T for Teen. Tired of the same old places to flirt? Now you can do it anywhere, anytime with your cell phone and Zed Chat. Chat and meet people. Zed Chat makes it easy. Just send a text message to 46933. Go to Create Message. Text Chat to start meeting people in your area. Send it now to 46933 and we'll send you four matching contacts. 
Remember, send chat to 46933 or go Zed. Try it now and the first week is free. Zed. Incontinent like a fox, it's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X-Play. Now, when Rise of Nations was released in 2003, it was clearly the best RTS on the market, and three years later, it's still great. That's because RTSs aren't about graphics. They're about balance and the quality of the gameplay, and the new generation of graphics cards don't easily affect that. Here's our review of Big Huge Games' newest offering, Rise of Nations, Rise of Legends. <laughs> What do you do when you've made the best historical RTS ever? If you're big, huge games, you follow it up with steampunk and sorcery in Rise of Nations, Rise of Legends. Believe it or not, Rise of Legends is a real-time strategy game with nary an elf or Nazi in sight. In this far-flung alien world of techno magic, three races vie for control of, mm, well, I think mostly they just want to kill each other. You have the Aileen, pseudo-Arabian mystics with dragons, scorpion riders, and other impossible creatures. The Quaddle, godlike death dealers with a Mayan flavor. Also, they have freaking lasers. And the Vinci, human masters of steam-powered war machines and clockwork monstrosities. Although, they don't seem to have invented the chair yet. Each nation plays very differently, to the point that if you play the Aileen like you play the Vinci, you'll find yourself dead before you know it. It's almost like there are three full games to learn how to play. The balance is pretty even between the three sides, although a few national powers feel a bit wonky. With the Aileen's ability to summon armies and even see the entire map at all times, it can feel like cheating. Does your character have facial hair? No, your character is William. You slut. No mind reading. Okay, not that bad. The basic elements of play will be familiar to Nation's veterans. Less emphasis on resource management, more emphasis on constructing really cool cities and amassing huge armies. You're not out to raise the landscape, you're out to take the enemy's stuff away and expand your territory. So multiplayer is a big thumbs up. Offline, Rise of Legends has sort of taken a step back. The risk-like conquer the world mode has been eaten up by this new campaign thing, which forces you through a fairly dull storyline. The Doge started this war, Giacomo, against us, against Pirata. Someone needed to stop it. Someone like Protruso? Or someone like you? God, that's awful. You still have the strategic map where you move around and upgrade your cities and units, but it feels constricting. I just want a map and an army and a mouse pointer to guide them. I guess I can forgive that in light of the pretty visuals and the incredibly imaginative units you get to control. The heavy hitters in this game are some of the coolest things ever put into an RTS. Huge glass dragons? Floating electric cities of death? Check. Hey, what's that noise? It's a giant steam-powered leviathan spider out of nowhere. I love the smell of solar-powered jaguar idols in the morning. Rise of Legends may not be the RTS Nirvana that Rise of Nations was, but it's a more than worthy follow-up. Haven't you killed enough Nazis and Romans already? Try blowing the crap out of an anti-gravity city for once in your life, huh? A four out of five. The playstyles are so different between the different races, it's almost hard to say how well balanced they are. Well, you guys have been trying out X-Play. Thank you for not smoking. 